we thought that for the purposes of the Michelson Interferometer Lab, we would take a short video to explain the operation of the unit. Uh, here we have in front of us a PASCO Scientific Michelson Interferometer. We'll explain the basic components and show a little bit of the alignment, and then we'll show you some of the interferometry effects that we can uh, achieve with this, this unit. So the system is um, relatively straightforward. We have a laser source that we're using for alignment. There's an input port where we can place a diffuser or a lens in order to scatter the beam a little bit. You can see that right now the beam shining on the screen has a few points that are, are displayed there. We're going to do some um, adjustment of the uh, mirrors in order to overlap those two spots, those various spots, in order to be able to see the fringe effects that we're after. We have a beam uh, splitter. This is a glass plate that is silvered on the back side from the input. When light comes through the input, it goes through that glass and shines off of the silvered side of this mirror, half of the light is going to trans, uh, transfer down this branch of the interferometer. There's an, um, an accessory mount we have positioned here. We have an adjustable mirror with some thumb screws that we can move to align the spots at the screen. So the, the light would go off the, um, the beam splitter, travel this branch, reflect back, where it recombines with the light that would have gone through the second path of the interferometer. Here we have a compensator plate. That makes sure that the light has gone through the same amount of glass, regardless of whether it goes down path A or path B. Light going down path B reflects off the movable mirror, back toward the beam splitter, and then gets reflected to the screen where the, the beams from the two paths are recombined. The adjustment of the, of the movable mirror is done using this micrometer screw. It has a range of motion of one millimeter, so translating between zero and 10 on this scale will translate to uh, one mil millimeter on the actual motion of the, the mirror itself, and you can then scale appropriately to determine the actual range of motion based on the, the grading on the micrometer here. Um, at this point, we are ready to start to align the or the Michelson interferometer. Um, so you can see as I adjust these thumb screws, you should be able to see that the light at the screen moves left and right or up and down, depending which screw I move. So I'm just going to bring the bright spots from the two beams into alignment. And when they are nicely aligned, we should see a little flickering. It takes a little fine adjustment here. Bear with me. There we go. So you may be able to see on camera that there's a little bit of flickering happening. When you see that flickering, we can put a diffuser into the system and you may be able to see some fringes here. I'll move our white light source out of the way. And we may dial in on the screen in a moment, but I can make some fine adjustments and you should now be able to see some pretty obvious rings, concentric circles of dark and light uh, spots on the screen. Now, effectively, we've achieved an interference pattern. Uh, the light from both paths has been recombined. Phase differences between those two paths cause either constructive inter interference, which causes a bright um, fringe, we call it, or a dark fringe in the case where the beams are out of phase. Um, by pi radians. If I now move the micrometer screw, you can see that the fringes will sort of shift their position on the screen. And so we could use this as a means of measuring um, distance by adjusting the screw. If we go in one direction, we can reverse and the fringes will go off screen vertically. If we go the other direction, they come onto the screen from the top. So there you have the alignment of the interferometer. Okay, here we've taken a green LED and a coin cell battery, and we have moved that into our system. Now when the interferometer's arms are at equal distance, we should be able to see interference fringes much like we saw with the 
red helium neon laser. However, the coherence length of an LED is much shorter than that of a laser. Oh, there we go. So we'll only be able to see fringes over a much shorter range of distance. And you can see that as long as we're near equal arm length position, if both of the branches of our interferometer are effectively equal, we're able to see fringes that are very similar to what we saw with the helium neon. However, you can see that our fringes, as I've moved the mirror, the transition, the translatable mirror slightly, have disappeared. This is because the coherence length of an LED is far less than that of a laser. If I return the mirror to its original position and travel in the other direction, you can see that we see fringes become sharp again briefly and then disappear off screen. So, quite interesting.